Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis. Welcome to episode 54. And this week, I want to go through something just a little bit different. I want to show you the retouching that I did on a recent sunrise landscape picture from when I was on holiday last week down in sunny Devon. Now, the out of camera shot is this one that you can see on screen now. And in just a few minutes using Lightroom's develop module or camera raw, I'm going to show you how we can turn it from the out of camera shot into this final print ready image. Now, one thing before we start is just to mention about the out of camera shot. You'll notice that it is quite underexposed, and that's something that I like to do when I'm photographing landscapes just for myself. What I'll tend to do is because I don't use filters or anything like that, I tend to photograph or expose for the sky, and then in the retouching side, that's when I start to bring out the detail in the foreground and all the detail areas, brighten up all those shadow areas. Now, it used to be a while back now, if we did that, we'd get loads of noise in those darker areas, but thankfully, with the way technology is moving on, the noise we see now is negligible, if anything at all and I'm using this Fuji X-T1 and you'll see on the file here that when we do bring out the detail in the shadow areas there really is no noise so we can get away with quite a lot there but hey that's enough of me let's crack on with the tutorial Okay, so I'm gonna be doing the retouching here in Lightroom, but if you're using Camera Raw, exactly the same things can be done because the develop module is the same in Lightroom as it is over in Camera Raw as well. So first thing I'm gonna do then is go to the out of camera shot, which is this one here, and give ourselves just a little bit more workspace. So I'm gonna press Shift and Tab to get rid of all the panels and come over to the right hand side and click to bring up the develop module just here and have that available to me. So as you can see, because I underexposed the picture, we've got great detail in the clouds, but it's the lower half of the picture where we need to bring out the detail. So the first thing I'm going to do is come to the shadow slider and bring that over to the right hand side. I don't generally use the exposure here because that's a little bit too strong to say the least. I like to use the shadow slider first of all and then come to the black slider and bring that one over to the right hand side. It's not often that I end up taking this all the way to 100 but I think in this picture here I think we really need to come to plus 100 there. So that's 100 on the shadows and the blacks. Now when we use those two sliders there, it can have an impact on the highlights and you can see that the clouds now don't look quite so dramatic. So to bring that back, I'm just gonna to come to the highlight slider and drag that one all the way up to the left to minus 100. So now when I do it before and after by pressing the backslash key, so we go before and after, before and after, you can see that the clouds are kind of remaining constant. Great detail but the foreground and all those kind of detail areas that were once dark, that's now bringing information in. So we're getting a really consistent look now, the clouds being nice and also some detail in the lower part of the picture. Now, the next thing I want to do is bring out the colors to kind of what it looked like when I was up at four in the morning taking this picture. So I'm gonna come and use the vibrant slider to do that because it's a lot more gentle on the image than saturation. Saturation is like a global adjustment. It looks at all the color in the picture and just boosts it. Whereas vibrance tends to look at what colors there are in the picture, which ones are lagging behind, and it brings those up so all the colors are then on a level pegging and you've got more, more balance in the image. So we'll go for vibrant, and I'm going to bring that over to the right hand side and I'm going to take that quite some way over because the colours were really dramatic at this time of the morning. I'll probably take it to around about plus 85, something like that. Now the next thing I want to do is just add a little bit of warmth into the sky. It wasn't quite so magenta as it is now, so to do that I'm going to get a graduated filter, click about a third of the way down in the sky and drag downwards. Now when I do that you can see that the gradient can go all over the place, but to kind of get it under control we can hold the shift key down and then that allows us to come down in a straight line. And I'll take it just below the, uh, the level or the line there of the distant hills, something like that. I add a little bit of warmth into the sky by coming to the temperature slider, taking that to around about plus 10, it doesn't have to be much, but around about plus 10-ish, something like that. That adds a bit of yellow in there, and maybe just a touch more magenta, something like that. So it's just a subtle change, but also while we're in this gradient, what I can also do is add a little bit of clarity in here. So we'll take the clarity way over to plus 100, and maybe add a little bit of contrast as well. Not so much, around about 20-ish, 25, let's go for 25, 24, 25-ish. So that's now added a lot more drama into the sky, but also a little bit of warmth. 
Now the next thing I want to do is just add a little bit, in, a little bit more impact onto the lake itself. And I'm gonna do that using an adjustment brush. So we'll now click on the adjustment brush. Let's just reset all these sliders to zero here by double clicking on the word effect. And I'm gonna just make sure that at the bottom here, where it says show selected mask overlay, make sure that's ticked because then wherever I paint, we're gonna see this red overlay appear like so. So this is kind of like defining the area that I wanna work on. So that I can see what I'm now doing, we can either take a tick out of there or just press O on your keyboard and that toggles it on and off. So O shows it and press an O again gets rid of it. And all I want to do in here is just add some clarity into the water. So we'll increase that to plus, let's have a look. I'm just doing this, there's no magic numbers here. I'm just doing, I'm doing this by sight. We'll go for around about 70-ish, something like that. And maybe a little bit of contrast in there as well. So I'll take that up to around about 20. And we'll just in ch uh, change the coloring in there. So let's add a little bit of blue by going to the temperature slider. So we'll go minus 10 to add in some blue. And a little bit more magenta, we'll go for around about plus eight, something like that. Now, the next thing I want to do is to draw more attention to the middle part of the picture where we've got the bushes, the farm buildings, and the distant, how, uh, distant hills. So I'm gonna do that again using an adjustment brush, but I need a new one, so I'll click on new, and that then gives me a whole load of brand new adjustments that I can use. Again, I'm gonna make sure that I've put the tick in the show selected mask overlay, or press the O key, but this time I'm also gonna make use of this down here, auto mask, I'm gonna put a little tick in there, because now when I paint over this area here that I want to adjust with the adjustment brush and we see the red overlay you can see how it's actually keeping it within the distant hills it's not spilling over into the actual sky so auto mask is doing a fabulous job of restricting where my adjustments are going to be now I've gone a little bit too far over on the left hand side into the lake so we'll just click on erase and I'll just paint that area just off there but you can see how really useful that auto mask is by helping us to sort of paint within that one area there. So let's press O on the keyboard to remove that. I'm gonna increase the shadows in here, so we'll go to plus 100. Exposure, I think we need a little bit of there. I don't often use this because it is a little bit too brutal, but we'll take it nice and gentle to go to plus 0 0.5, something like that's looking good. And maybe add just a little bit more magenta into it. So we'll come to the tint slider, and we'll probably take that over to point uh, about five, something like that. So it's very, very subtle. All right, so I think the next thing I'll do is maybe a little bit of sharpening. So let's just come out of the adjustment brush by clicking on the adjustment brush itself, and we'll come down to the details uh, tab further on down. And I'm gonna take, this is a landscape picture, so I'll tend to sharpen these a little bit more than say a portrait, but I'll take the amount way up now to around about 80-ish, something like that. But what I don't wanna do is to have uh, sharpening applied too much on the sky, so I'm gonna hold down my Alt or the Option key, and then come to the masking slider and click down. So obviously at the moment it goes white, which as we know means that the whole picture has been sharpened, but as I drag over to the right now and keep on dragging to the right, black areas are introduced, and the black areas areas are where sharpening hasn't been applied. So if I take it to around about 75-ish, we can see that there's virtually no sharpening now being applied to the sky, but plenty over the, the hills and the uh, farm buildings and the bushes. So that's around about there looks good for me. Now, like I said at the start on the intro here, we, we don't have to worry too much about noise. And if I kind of like zoom in on this image now, I don't know if you're gonna see it on your screens, but even in those shadow areas that we really did brighten the detail up in there, there's minimal um, noise being introduced. But I suppose we could just do a little bit of noise reduction. So I'll come further on down and where we've got the luminance slider, we'll just bring that over just a little bit. Doesn't need to be much nowadays with these cameras to around about 15. And the other sliders, I'm just gonna leave at their default. All right, so now then, let's just zoom back out again. And what I wanna do is just get rid of any marks that are showing up on the pitch. Now I'm gonna use the spot removal so we can click on that. And one thing that we do, have, we do have now in Camera Raw and in Lightroom is this visualize spots where we can now control this slider to tell Lightroom or Camera Raw to really look at our image to find any parts or any dust specks that we don't want to have so that we can remove them. But I'm not gonna do it on that this picture here because I know where the ones are that I wanna get rid of. So let's just come out of the spot removal and I'm gonna zoom in just a turn and let's have a look here. There's one up in the sky. There we go. Just this one, 
just here. I want to get rid of that. So I'll get the spot removal tool now and I'm just going to quick paint over it and Lightroom does a great job at removing it. Now I'm going to hold down my space bar, click and drag up into the, uh, or oh, sorry, down even into the actual lake because there's a few areas here that I want to get rid of. And we've got this one just here. And it's again, does a great job removing it. You'll notice that as I bring my cursor out of the work area, those kind of like overlay areas there that are the ones where I've actually painted on and where Lightroom is using to cover over it, they disappear. And that's only because in the bottom left-hand side here where it says tool overlay, I've got it set to auto. And I like that option so I can bring my cursor out and they tend to disappear. Now there's a few other areas that I wanna get rid of. So if you just click and drag around, there's just a few of these kind of like reeds here that I'm gonna get rid of. And again, just using the spot removal in the heel setting, I can paint over those and Lightroom does a great job at removing them really, really realistically and quickly. So let's just get rid of some of these here. Quickly paint on these, something down there. Space bar, click and drag so we can move the image across. And we'll just get rid of these last ones just here as well. So nice and quick, like so. All right, so we'll come out of the spot removal, press spacebar to zoom back out now so we get the full view. And I think the last thing I think we'll do at this stage is just add a little bit of a vignette. So we'll come to the radial filter. I'm gonna click in the middle of my image and then drag outwards and upwards to get this nice kind of oval. And we'll just take it right just outside the boundaries of the picture. And then all I'm gonna do is take the exposure slider down to minus, 0.5-ish, something like that. So it kind of like darkens down that area. So if I now come out of the radio filter, again do a before and after by pressing that backslash key, we can see how far we've come from the start, just a few minutes to get to this stage. Now I guess at this stage you could say that the picture, apart from maybe cropping it, is virtually finished. But one thing I notice in here, and you'll see them as well, we've got these electrical wires running across the middle of the picture. Now of course they're part of the landscape, they're already there, but I tend to find them just a little bit too distracting so I want to remove them. Now in Lightroom or Camera Raw we've got the spot removal like we've just used there to clean up the image. We could use those in Heal and in Clone but I've already tried it and it's just a little bit tricky doing it especially when we get near to the hill. So at this stage here because it's more of a more detailed and more kind of intricate bit of retouching this is when I'd head over into Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the photo menu, choose edit in and at the bottom here open as a smart object in Photoshop. Photoshop because we're always looking to work non-destructively and have access to the retouching that we've already done. So I'm going to click on this one here and that'll then send this image over as a smart object over into Photoshop. Okay, so now that the uh, picture is now opened up in Photoshop, what I'm gonna do is just zoom in so we can see these uh, wires just a little bit closer. I'm gonna add a blank layer. Again, I wouldn't work destructively. I wouldn't work exactly on the actual picture. Always wanna do this kind of retouching on its own layer. Plus you can't actually do this uh, cloning and healing on a smart object anyway. So let's just rename this one to uh, wires. And now I think I'll start off, the wires that are quite some distance away from anything else, like these hills and trees, we can get away with using something like the spot healing brush tool. And all I'm gonna do with the settings on these, you can see at the top of the screen, uh, because I'm doing this on a blank layer, I've got it set to sample all layers, and I'm gonna use it in the content aware. And all I'm gonna do is just bring the brush over these wires and just small strokes like so to sort of remove them. I don't, I tend to find that shorter strokes is, is much more better way of removing it like this. But you can see it does a pretty good job removing these wires. Now what I'm not going to do is make you sit there and watch as I go through for the next couple of minutes or so just removing these wires but what I will do is show you what I do when I get near to somewhere that's a little bit tricky which is why I'm actually doing this now in Photoshop as opposed to in Lightroom because if I use this um, uh, healing brush here, the spot healing brush when I come near to the hills, you'll notice we do get just a little bit of smudging there. So we don't want to do that. When I get near to something, that's when I switch over to something like the clone stamp tool. I just make sure that the settings at the top says current and below, because again, we are working on this blank layer. And I'm also going to make sure it says aligned. So now what I'll do when I come near to something else like these hills, I'll hold down my alter option key to sample an area of sky just above the wire, click, and then I just come along and paint to remove it. Once I'm away from anywhere near the hills, that's when I'll jump over to using the spot healing brush. But like I said, I won't let you sit there for a couple of minutes. I'll just carry on doing that and then we'll carry on with the final bit of the retouching. 
All right, so we've jumped forward maybe about a minute and a half to two minutes, and you can see now when I turn this wires layer on and off, you can see that we've moved those wires as well as the telegraph pole over in the far left-hand corner. And that's all I'd want to do in Photoshop. So all I'm gonna do now then is go to the file menu, choose save, that's gonna save my image, update what it looks like over in Lightroom. So now when I head over into Lightroom, we can see here we've got our final retouch picture. In fact, the last thing I'm going to do is just crop it just a touch. So we'll go to the press R on my keyboard so we can get the crop and drag up the bottom to around about there and press enter to commit it. And let's just press F on the keyboard to go to the full screen view. And there you go, the final retouch picture in relatively short space of time. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea as to uh, how I approach the retouching on landscape pictures and also how I photograph them. You remember I said about the fact that I underexpose. Generally, if I'm using something like this X-T1 here, I'll put the camera into aperture priority mode, expose the scene, then underexpose it so I get loads of detail in the sky. And then in the retouching, I can then bring out the detail in those kind of shadow areas without introducing loads of noise, which is a great thing about the way the technology is moving on nowadays. It gives us a lot more flexibility but hey that's all I've got for you this week so if you do like the video make sure you click on the like button that'll do me a good favor and also if you've got any questions or comments drop me a line to glynn at glynnjewish.com or leave a comment in the section below if you haven't already subscribe and let other people know about it but for now that's all I've got for you I'll see you next time